Ho ho, hold up one second. You ready to bust out your tattoo gear and get busy on that sick tattoo that you've got planned for your friend. But before you do that, I've got some budget home tattoo workstation setup tricks that are A, super easy for you to do, B, going to help you practice safer for both yourself and your client, and C, will hopefully keep you off those crazy Instagram pages where you end up as entertainment for the rest of us. So if that sounds good to you, let's get to it. Welcome everybody and thanks for tuning in. First things first, who the heck am I and why should you care? Short intro. My name is Sprinkles or Sprinks for short. I'm a professional tattooer and contemporary artist. I've tattooed alongside extremely well-known tattooers in the industry and worked at some of Australia's premier tattoo studios before running my own private studio for the last six years. I specialize in tattooing delicate black and gray work with a focus on representing flowers, animals, and ladies. I've been tattooing for 13 years now, sometimes in some pretty unique circumstances, which has allowed me to pick up some tricks and tips along the way, some of which I'm about to share with you right now. Now, everything I'm going to mention on this list is available at the supermarket. I'm gonna run through the list, I'll explain why, and then I'll go through a complete setup for you so you know how it should look and what it should feel like when you sit down to start on your piece. It's also important to note that there are biodegradable options for every component needed in a workstation setup. And I recommend that you always try to go for the eco-friendly choice. Everything is single use and consumable and the last thing the world needs is more plastic. Now, quick disclaimer before I get absolutely flamed in the comments. It's important to note that people aren't tattooing at home because of videos like this. In fact, I'm making this video because people are tattooing at home. It's 2022, we are in the third year of the pandemic now. People have more time on their hands than they ever have before. And with access to equipment being as easy as it is, I think there has never been a more important time to get people practicing in the safest way possible. I would like to remind you that this is a budget setup as well. There are definitely better options available, but these are going to help you in a pinch or simply get you started if you're just beginning. With all that finally aside, let's get stuck into the good stuff. We'll keep a tally as we go so we can keep track of the costs as they build up. Obviously, we want to keep this as budget friendly as possible. All right, first on the list, we have isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. We're going to swing by this aisle here and pick ourselves up some plastic wrap or cling film. Next on the list, we're going to look for our trusty friend paper towel. We're going to hunt down some tape Although in this instance, I found some basic tape at home that I decided to use, remembering that this is a budget setup and we're doing the best we can with what we have. Next, we're going to hunt down some foam pump soap. We're then going to follow that up with some cups. We're going to add Vaseline to the list. We're going to make sure we have some bin liners as well. And if you can manage, we're going to throw some freezer bags on the list as well. Last, but definitely 100% not least, we're going to get some gloves. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Please, please wear freaking gloves, okay? Our hands are literally ground zero and the last thing we want is to get all up in the mix of blood and ink while we're working. You can never be too careful and you can never be too sure that you're not going to spread those substances to other surfaces in your home and that is definitely not what we want. Moving into the setup now, guys, we're going to take our alcohol and put some on a paper towel. We're gonna to use that to wipe down our surface, prepping it so that it's nice and clean, ready for the next component. If you have a spray bottle at home, you can use that is the most effective way. I was lucky enough to find one, so I'm gonna use that here. We're going to make sure there's a bin liner in our bin. Next, we're gonna get our friend plastic wrap and we're gonna use that to create a membrane between the work surface and our actual work station. This is extremely important. Uh, as a lot of you may not know, there is an invisible mist that sprays from the end of the needle while you're moving to and from your ink cup. 
That invisible mist can get on all of your surface without you even knowing and let's be real, a lot of these at home tattoo situations happen in the kitchen where we prepare our food and consume our meals. Now I don't know about you but I sure as heck don't want those cooties in my nachos. Before moving on, now's a great time to throw on a fresh pair of gloves. We're going to take some paper towel now and put it down in a square large enough for us to work from. We're going to use this as a spill mat just in case we have any whoopsie daisies while we're working and we'll have something there to catch the spills. We're also going to pull a good amount here, fold it in half and tear it. That way it gives us the best use of our resources and we're going to use these torn parts to clean as we work. The next step is to grab our tape and we're going to use that to securely fasten the paper towel spill mat down. We want to do this in a way that ensures we're keeping the spill mat tight. If there are any uneven parts to this, we could accidentally tip over our ink cup when we place our hand on the paper towel. A small detail, but very useful. Picking up the pump soap now, we're going to move back to our friend plastic wrap and cover this completely, making sure we have the bottom and the top pump completely protected. Again, our goal here is to avoid any cross-contamination that could later then be spread to other areas in our home. We're going to fill up our cup with water. This is so we have a clean source where we can dip our needle and wash out any dry ink or blockages that may have occurred in our needle while we're working. Now we're going to take our freezer bags and we're going to use these to cover our tattoo equipment. Just slip the power supply in and make sure that it's completely covered. And then we're also going to take the same approach with our tattoo machine and completely wrap that up as well. And it's good to know that this is effective for both coil machines and rotary tattoo machines alike. You can note here that you can also complete this step with plastic wrap if you need to. I'm using a rotary tattoo machine today and once you have your rotary machine covered, we are going to need to fasten it in place. Another little trick you can do here is to take a piece of paper towel, wrap it around the machine, and then secure it with a piece of tape. This helps to give you a good, slightly cushioned grip surface, as without this, it could be quite slippery to hold. This machine takes needle cartridges, and when it comes time to insert your needle, simply use it to puncture a little hole, flip it around, and secure it in place. Do pay attention to making sure that there is not a double film here. It can stop the needle from fitting properly. Again, a little detail, but a big help. Now, ensuring we're wearing a fresh glove, we're going to take a small amount of Vaseline and put that on our spill mat. This is to use while we're working to ensure that we're lubricating the skin surface and moisturizing it at the same time. It does provide some assistance in keeping the ink from smearing as well, which helps to avoid excessive wiping, which leads to loss of stencil. And here we go. Our complete budget home tattoo workstation setup is here. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? And wasn't that easy? Even though it's budget, it looks a lot better and you can feel safe knowing that you don't look like this guy here. Bruh. Guys, I have left about two or three things off this particular list, but don't worry. I'll be making another upcoming video that will communicate the use of those items in better context. Now that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for tuning in. This is my first video on the channel and I plan to make many more. If you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below. I'd love to hear some feedback. And if you'd like to stay in the loop, hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming content. You can also check out more of my work here on Instagram and follow me on Twitter as well. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.